Hey guys. All right, do we have, do we have any parents in the house? Anybody got anybody with kids between like four and eight ish? Well, only a couple. Okay. Uh, well, this one's for you guys, I guess. But, I mean, the rest of you guys can watch too. I feel really lucky that pressure is off. I don't even have to talk about my own pictures, really. Um, I will give a little bit of an intro. Some of you guys don't know who I am. My name is Aaron Huey, and I shoot photos for this magazine. I'm going to set this up a little bit so you understand why my son and I are on this adventure together. Uh, this is a photo story I did for National Geographic in 2013. Uh, but I didn't start shooting National Geographic stories. I started with the Polaroid. This is me at eight. You know, back in the day when we had real analog photos and you could hold it in your hand and kind of flick it around and keep it in a shoebox and everything wasn't on an iPhone. Uh, but now I have all this shit. I have all this junk kind of... <laughs> and I don't always carry this much stuff. This was, I was unpacking from an assignment in Denali National Park and I needed all that stuff because I was shooting stuff like this. Um, and this isn't my regular beat. This, is a, this story's coming out in the magazine this winter, uh, I think February. Uh, but the stories that really get to my heart and the stories that are, have kind of defined my career to this point have been stories about people. Photos I could really shoot with one camera and one lens because um, I think all that gear is really distracting at the end of the day. Um, I go deep into communities uh, like the Oglala Sioux on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in South Dakota. Um, I've photographed the Sherpas of Everest for National Geographic. Um, these are really, really long projects. The Sherpa story was like seven or eight years. Uh, or I mean, the Sherpa story was uh, maybe like 90 days on assignment. The Pine Ridge story was seven or eight years. Uh, and then this one in the Georgian Republic uh, on the border of Georgia and Russia. A uh, story about ancient rituals and a dying language and this, these kind of incredible places. So uh, that's kind of my background in photography. I also did a little bit with war. I lived in uh, Afghanistan for six months covering the drug war for the New Yorker and the New York Times. Uh, but then I had this kid. Uh, his name is Hawkeye Huey. And that's, we're here today to really to look at Hawkeye Huey's photographs and this journey that Hawkeye and I took together. Um, when Hawkeye was about three, we started taking road trips together a little bit away from um, Hawkeye's mother and to kind of give her a break and so that he and I could do the things that I did with my own father as a child. And we went to a lot of the same places. This was Craters of the Moon uh, National Monument in Idaho. And this was uh, on the way to Jackson Hole. I always remember this gas station uh, with a giant jackalope in Dubois. Uh, and when Hawkeye was like, maybe this is, Hawkeye's in that photograph right there. He's maybe one and a half years old. But when he turned four years old, I wanted to take him back to this specific place in this area. This is Salvation Mountain. It's this incredible man-made mountain in the deserts of Southern California near the Salton Sea. Um, a guy literally spent 27 years making a man-made mountain. But I fell in love with this, this area, the Salton Sea, everything around it, the people, the environment, man-made mountains, the kind of shanty town that's grown up around this place. People are living in like lean-to shelters and blanket forts. Uh, and I just, I fell in love with this place. And I kept going back. And it's the kind of place where people burn couches at night uh, and do graffiti on giant water towers and eat rattlesnakes for dinner. And so I thought, this is a perfect place to take my son on a vacation. <laughs> and, and so this was like, my wife was super nervous about this trip because the idea was we were gonna fly there for like a week and build blanket forts in the desert and sleep there and, and like live with these guys. This was our idea, this was our, the beginning of the adventure. But the wind came up and it blew everything away and so we lost our blanket fort adventure. Um, but luckily, on the way to the desert, we stopped at a camera shop and bought a camera for Hawkeye. And so the trip wasn't designed to be a photography project. I just thought it would be a fun thing for us to do. But I had seen Hawkeye once with an iPhone. I saw him hold down the button of an iPhone and take like 100 pictures in like 15 seconds. And I, th and I knew that I never wanted him to touch anything like that ever again, as long as I could keep it away from him. And so out of my own nostalgia, I think, for the analog and my own youth, and because I didn't want him having an iPhone or a touch screen or something to swipe, I bought him this instant camera. I knew I wanted something he could hold in his hand and keep in a shoebox. Um, 
And so we went to Salvation Mountain. This is Salvation Mountain. Um, and that first day when Hawkeye started shooting photos with me, I took this picture of him. And at the time, that day I was feeding National Geographic's Instagram stream. And I put this photo up and it went out to you know the many millions of people that a stream like that goes to. And people kind of went crazy and said, oh my God, show us the pictures he's making. And I hadn't really thought about doing something like that. But it was like a very consistent, like we really want to see this, like a real curiosity. And so I started an account just to show his work so it wouldn't overwhelm mine. And it turned into this phenomenon. By the end of the day, I think this experiment had 15,000 followers in a day. So and now we're at like 104,000. Uh, so that was the beginning. Uh, I knew the first time I saw Hawkeye shoot like a 10 pack of this stuff and lay it out on the ground and everybody kind of came around and was smiling and like picking up the pictures. I, I just fell in love with this project and I knew it was something I wanted to keep doing. Um, and I think I knew that I liked it at this point, anyways, better than anything I personally was shooting. Like I, I really legitimately liked my son's pictures better than mine. Um, I liked that they were blurry and like didn't focus on the right thing and cut things off and, and kind of the, the physical level he was shooting from, the kind of, they were intimate in a way that mine weren't and from a different perspective that I'd never seen before. And I've got all the books about everything everybody's shot on the American West and, and this was something I thought that was really different. Um, and so I kind of chaperoned Hawkeye around this strange desert world shooting photos of these people. And, you know, when, when we stood, when, once we started doing this, it really made me ask the question, you know, what is a camera in the hands of a four-year-old? Because a camera in the hands of a four-year-old is not the same thing that it is in, in yours or mine. You know, why do, why do we use cameras? Um, we use cameras to preserve memory. You know, we're really caught up in needing this kind of proof of our life. We have all these stories that kind of trap us in the past or extrapolating us into the future, kind of spinning out all the time. It's like these moments of time are our proof, our memory. But a, but a four-year-old doesn't need that. A four-year-old is kind of perfect still. A four-year-old is still super, super present. Um, they don't need memories like that. Um, and it's not about aesthetics for them either. They don't have a whole collection of catalogs on all the photography of the American West. And they haven't studied everything Stephen Shore and Alex Soth has done and, and everybody that's ever shot. And they don't have those aesthetics in their mind already. So, and they're not making those kind of judgments. They're not trying to get perfect light or get the compositions like their favorite professionals are getting. Um, they're kind of maybe just trying to get the thing in the rectangle. I don't even know what they're, so I, it was, I was so curious about this, like what, what is Hawkeye thinking about? And I still, you know, at four he couldn't really, he couldn't give me that information, so I had to kind of just watch to see him. And so I, I wandered with Hawkeye, and sometimes I would shoot with him. This was a guy named Jack that lived in a water tower, and so I'd shoot Jack, and then Hawkeye would meet Jack, and then Hawkeye would shoot Jack, and, and this was a really fun experiment to see the different kind of images we made. And they were really different. You know, he's this analog camera with a, with a fixed flash and it's a little blurry, you can't print it really big. Um, but I love these pictures. And so we started to do more experiments. We started to go to other places that in my own youth and with my own father and with my own family that I had traveled, that I had nostalgia for. Um, this was at the Cody Knight Rodeo. This was actually shot on film um, on an old Leica M6. Um, I grew up in a small town in Wyoming, so I wanted to take Hawkeye to a small town in Wyoming. I wanted him to see an event like the Cody Knight Rodeo and see what kind of images he would make behind these same shoots of these same kind of cowboys. So I would take him to places that I knew were really visually rich. Um, and, and it worked. He's, you know, this kid is like less than three feet off the ground and it, it makes a really different kind of picture. You know, he went through a lot of phases where a lot of pictures are kind of tilted at extreme angles, I, I like those ones. But some re he made really magic frames, and I, you know, and he didn't really know what he was doing. I'd just say, just go get in the middle of those guys and go, just, just go talk to them. Start, start taking pictures. Don't worry about anything. And he'd just, he'd go and start meeting people, and uh, some of his compositions, like, I didn't get anything this good that night at the Cody Night Rodeo. Um, probably because I was comparing it to other rodeo photos of my mind or other 
radio photos I had taken or the light wasn't right and Hawkeye Huey didn't care about that stuff. Like he was just a four year old like having fun and made really great photographs. And so we, we went to a lot of rodeos because I they made just awesome photos and they were fun for me to go to. And and for me this was a way to get Hawkeye this wasn't about photography for me really. This was about getting Hawkeye to engage with human beings. I wanted Hawkeye to learn how to talk to people, um, how to look people in the eye and ask them questions about their lives and to see and hear things that were different from our own life. Um, piece of cow shit. Uh, unique perspective there. Uh, we went to all kinds of hilarious like patriotic events to see American nationalism on display. These were some of my favorites. This was at a hometown 4th of July rodeo where I grew up in Wyoming, Mount Rushmore. We always stopped and talked to these guys. We'd always have a conversation with whoever we met. This is one of my super favorites. I love this one. I, I it's just, <laughs> it's just, it's perfect. I just, I didn't even get my camera out that day. It was like high noon. I was like, oh man, this light sucks. I'm not even gonna bother. And Hawkeye Huey just nailed it. <laughs> he just totally got the shot. Love that one. We went to Joshua Tree, California, just because I like Joshua Tree. You know, a lot of people ask me, like, well, how do you, like, how does he choose all this stuff? He doesn't choose this stuff, he's four. <laughs> like, I'm choosing this stuff. <laughs> I wanna go camping at Joshua Tree. That's why he has these pictures. <laughs> so, and I'd take him on, like, a long time ago, I walked across America like all the way, like five months of walking. And I walked by the v VLA, the very large array, and, and I fell in love with this kind of series of little towns in, in, the, in, the, mount, in the like highlands of New Mexico. And so I wanted him to go there. And so we went and walked around the VLA and Magdalena and a place called Pie Town. We went to Arches National Park. That's his mom walking up there to the window. But like, I don't think I would have made that picture there and I am totally in love with this picture. It's a really unique picture from that place. Everybody always gets the whole arch, but this like eye-like image that he made was really special, you know? And, 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 and again, people are like, well, my, my kid shoots photos, but his photos don't look like this. Well, that parent probably didn't like race across New Mexico to get to, like, to get to this mountain like at the exact moment of sunset. They didn't like race to get to Shiprock just so their kid could get a picture. But we did, because I knew it would make a really rad photograph. So um, we just went to really extreme lengths. And I think it's important to point out that this, is, this project is not about positioning Hawkeye as some kind of prodigy. It's an easy story to tell because he's, he got represented by National Geographic at the age of four and has 100,000 followers. But that's just because of my own positioning. This is really a story about the creative genius of all children, that like any parent could do this you know, with any child. I could do this with any child, really. Um, I don't know if it would be as much fun. Hawkeye Hugh is pretty fun. Um, we made a trip to Las Vegas just because I thought that would be really hilarious. There's a lot of really weird stuff to shoot in Las Vegas. <laughs> so we walked around Las Vegas with Hawkeye in a spacesuit, and he shot just amazing pictures of pe <coughs> people with blue lips and, like, tourists and castles, and uh, Las Vegas made some of my favorite photos for sure. I, I can't show all of them here, but we have like, there's at least, there's 100 great photos from Las Vegas. Um, this one I had to pretend like I was getting an elevator and I told him to go get, get pictures of the gamblers while I was, and then I just pretend like I wasn't looking while he was over there shooting, and I'd just call, and call him back. So I did teach him to do some stealthy moves. It wasn't all like, yeah, I meet everybody. Every once in a while, I'd, I'd teach him how to really just get in there, ninja style. That was one of those. We talked to this guy, but most people we did talk to. Uh, love that one, too. This guy kind of with no legs, doing handstands, hung out with him for a while. Trannies, we love trannies. Hawkeye's really into trannies. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I just like, I wouldn't think of a lot of these frames, like with how the light comes in and what, like what's in the frame. 
And I, and I, don't, I still don't really know what Hawkeye's thinking of, because when I try to ask him about some of this stuff, he diverts the conversation to Star Wars Lego sets, because he actually doesn't really care about photography too much. He's really, really into like Legos and like any karate chopping sticks and stuff. Uh, there's a roadside tiger at some tiger sanctuary on uh, Route 66. But there's some like there's some beautiful genius in a bunch of his frames where it's like a hard flash against a chain link fence, it's like weird obscured objects, a portrait of a portrait of the American West. Like I love that one. That's a great one. God love that. That's uh, taxidermy. Can't go wrong with taxidermy. I did influence him. I did say that he should really get into shooting taxidermy, so he always, he knew that I liked that, so he'd shoot those sometimes. Uh, it's an old abandoned schoolhouse in a, like the back roads of Wyoming, places that I drove by with my family. So a lot of this really was, for me, an echo, too, of my travels with my own father. This uh, smoke break in an alley in Billings, Montana, Horseshoe bend. You know, Hawkeye, did, Hawkeye didn't have a, he's not using one of those like super wide lenses like everybody uses to shoot horseshoe bend. Everybody wants that same super generic shot of horseshoe bend. Everybody's trying real hard to get that same shot that there's already like 500,000 shots of. Um, and, and all of Hawkeye's photos, he made like, we made like 20 photos there and I like all of these ones better than I like that generic photo of horseshoe bend that everybody makes. It's just a really different view. This was like uh, like a snowy morning. It was like a, f a big snow out in at the National Monument, and that's like the railing with some dripping water kind of coming into the frame that most people would have cut out. And he didn't leave that in there artistically. It just looks like it, kind of. You know, I like the weird in in between moments he gets people from, and he's shooting from this kind of lower angle. Uh, this was near, this was on the reservation, this is on the Navajo Nation. Tumble, this tumbleweed shot's one of my favorites. You know, not shooting the obvious thing and shooting from a different vantage point. And, and again, I'm choosing a lot of these subjects, so we're driving along the highway and I see an old abandoned building or a horse, you know, I'm usually the one that wants to stop the car and go walk around for an hour. He might just actually want to play on an iPad for a little bit longer. But Hawkeye could always get photos that I couldn't. We'd walk into a Navajo market where I didn't feel comfortable starting to shoot photos of people because I hadn't really met them yet, and Hawkeye could, he was four, he could go meet any elder he wanted and go shoot photos. So Hawkeye made amazing photos. He made like a whole portfolio in like 45 minutes at the Navajo market in Tuba City, Arizona. That's another one of my favorites. Crystals in a rock shop. I used to go to a lot of rock shops with my dad. Ten Sleep Canyon, Wyoming. Grand Canyon. This was a powwow in Grand, Grand Rondi, uh, Oregon. A llama at a petting zoo near Zion National Park. A buddy we met at a at a gas station coffee shop. Seaweed in uh, on uh, Hobbit Beach in Oregon. Smokey the Bear, at a Fourth of July parade. A stop sign in Pie Town, New Mexico. Guy we pulled up next to in a gas station. The dump here in Seattle, North Seattle dump. That's a that's part of that's a portrait of America. And I really think that this this body of work it does sit in some strange way alongside all of the other documentations of the American West. Um, it's a really unique perspective. This is a homeless guy downtown by the market. 
This was one of the only ones where we clipped on that little, the Fuji cameras come with this little clip-on thing that's really easy to lose, but it makes really crazy, beautiful photos. We didn't use it very much, but it was really nice. This guy was his pet crow. I got like three slides left. And that's downtown by the market. It was the last couple of my show. We, we made a little selfie device for him since he didn't have a cell phone to do the flip around function on. He had pull on that cord. He did our family, our family Christmas card <laughs> that year. So that's what I got for you guys. This, this journey continues. Um, uh, we share most of this work through Instagram. We are, we're making a book right now called Cowboys, Indians, Hobos, Gamblers, Patriots, Tourists, and Sunsets. I hope you guys will buy one. We need your help because we uh, launched a Kickstarter and we're a super long ways from meeting the goal. Um, we will get it. We got like 16 days left. Look up Hawkeye Huey on Kickstarter. I think we're, we're doing soft cover books for $35 and we're selling prints and even some originals, a bunch of originals of his. And uh, thanks for having me, guys. <laughs>